are back again with another edition of Expecting Good Things with Chopper and Kristen. Ain't she just pretty? You're just always on cue with that. <laughs> hey, we're talking all this week about vision. We're looking back at a message that we spoke at. It was kind of a, a it wasn't a Q&A, but we were just kind of going back and forth, more me going forth and you just sitting back. But I mean, <laughs> I talk more than you often. But we were talking on Vision Sunday. And I, it that Sunday has been so, such a blessing mm-hmm. to the church. It has ignited things. And there are so many yeah. exciting things taking place. Uh, we're, we're from yesterday. We showed you a song, a "Glorious Day," that Zoe let yeah. off on, and uh, got to help her. Ashley was with us. They did a good job. They, they did, and we're probably going to play that again sometime this week because I just like the song. I just like it, and we got daily program, and I can do it. You know, used to back in the day on those telephones, on PTL and TBN and stuff, and even Jimmy Swagger fan, they play it, sing it one more time. They'll <laughs> sing one song over and over and over again. But well, when I, it's good, you want to sing it more than once. That's right. Hey, won't you hit that share button if you're watching online? And you can, if you didn't know this, you can also be notified when we're online. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on WFBN. We're on the Pioneer Network. I'm not sure where all else we are on, but we are <laughs> glad to be here, telling you you can expect. Good thing. That's right. You got your expectations up? I do, always. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Took me a while to get there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes you got to, you got to, you kind of like a car on a cold morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then finally it starts up. I'm not sure what kind of car that was. I don't think it was an American made muscle car. But anyway, no. <laughs> it's more like a Kubota two cycle. <laughs> okay. Uh, today uh, we're going to be playing some music from a uh, recording I did several years ago. Yeah. At Life Today Studios uh, at James Rob- James and Betty Robinson's place. Uh, but it's from an album I recorded. I didn't realize this, Chris, and that album was released 11 years ago. Speak to Your Mountain. It's the wow. title cut of the, the title song. We're going to be singing. We're going to be sharing that here in just a little bit. But before we do, we want to remind you tomorrow night at Rock City Church, it's church. We're going to be having a wonderful time. Wonderful time. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, my good friend Phil Daniels is going to be yes. preaching. And every time this man grabs the mic, he's got a word to bring. He's so good. tomorrow night, 7 o'clock here at Rock City Church, you don't want to miss it. Brother Phil Daniels is going to be preaching. And then Saturday night, it is the Super Southern Gospel Show from 6 to 9. Yeah. Oh, 99.5 FM. That's always fun. Enjoy doing it. And we're taking calls. You can call in and request your favorite. Even if you're somewhere else, you can just take the number down and maybe we'll share it on here sometime. But that's that. Plus, then coming the favor and increase weekend is coming in March, right. March 19th and 20th with my good friend Bishop Jerry Grillo. Lots of exciting things. But between now and then, every Sunday morning, what happens at 10 a.m.? Church at Rock City. Where? We're, we're located at 10225 Highway 107 in Sherwood. That's yep. just right off 107. It's really easy to find. I mean, it's like 107 parking lot. That's like yep. you ain't got to go hunt for us. It's <laughs> JFK Boulevard if you want know if you wonder where that part of the world is. Yeah. So we would love for you to come out and join us. Exciting things are happening here at the Growing, Going, Happening Rock City Church. It yes. is wonderful. We're going to talk more today about vision. Vision is important. By the way, if you have a prayer request you would like for us to pray with you over, maybe you have a vision of getting that need met, I want mm-hmm. you to send us an email right there, prayer at rockcity.family. And we'll join our faith with you, and we'll be believing God with you for God to meet your needs. There's power in agreement. Yes, there is. We're to agree as touching anything. They shall ask. They shall have what they ask of the Father. Jesus said that in his word. So, let us know about it. Prayer at rockcity.family. Hey, one of the most powerful things you can do as a child of God is never run at your giant with your mouth That's closed, right. is what Mark Hankins said. That's right. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, to be not be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have, have whatsoever, whatsoever he says. In other words, speak to the mountain. Day you face your mountain is bigger than you ever dreamed.
You did a really good job on it. Thank you. And you can tell that it was a few years ago with the color of your hair. <laughs> and the chiseledness of my jaw. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but you that did. That suit does not fit. <laughs> no. It does not fit. No. no. It's not even in the closet anymore. Speaking it of was increase, for a while. I have had increase in my life. <laughs> not the right kind of increase. Hey, hey, hey. I don't even know what I weighed back then, but I guarantee you I it weigh at least that. what you do now. Oh, I weigh that much now and then some. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to start speaking to this mountain. There you go. And doing something about it. Oh, that takes there action. you go. There you go. Not okay. just speaking to it. So I it. just can't just say it. I got to do something uh-huh. about it. Yeah. Is that kind of like Faith Without Works is dead? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're talking about vision this week. And I thoroughly enjoy talking about vision because it is so important. And you mentioned at the end of the um, broadcast yesterday about the plumb line. And I'd never really thought about our vision, like within our church or within our family or within your place of business, of your vision being a plumb line and how it holds everything together of what you Mm -hmm. can focus on, what you should be focusing Mm -hmm. on, what you should push away from your focus. And it brings everything back to where it needs to be. Yes. It's just such a great analogy because, like I said, I've not thought about that in that way before. And honestly, I didn't even know what a plumb line was because I wasn't construction minded. But those of you that are, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you agree. That's a really great analogy. When I first, I I, I mean, I've said this before. If you see a turtle on top of a fence post, he didn't get there by himself. Right. Uh, I've often said original is overrated. The only thing you can really be original at is being yourself. Because when you try to be somebody else, all you'll ever be is second best. Uh And um, you ought to be yourself because everybody else is taken. Those are nice little (laughs) one-liners. But uh, where I first saw the the example of a plumb Mm -hmm. line used with vision was when I had the privilege of 
uh, had a meeting with Pastor Ben Daly of Calvary right. Church in, in Irving, Texas. Mm-hmm. And we were sitting there. It was, it was you and I, Pastor Daly and, and Pastor Danny Wegman. Mm-hmm. And good friend. By the way, I, we're jumping ahead, but Danny's coming in May. Right. Oh, my goodness. He's going to be imparting some awesome stuff. Uh, but he, he held up that plumb line, and he was saying, this plumb line keeps us... You know, you, you may have an idea, you may, well, but but does it line up with the plumb line? Mm-hmm. Because if you don't use a plumb, if you don't have something as a reference point, the house will be all. Oh, it'll be terrible. Earth. You'll set a, a pencil on your counter and it'll it, roll off just, to the side. You've got, you, I mean, or, or yeah. It'll just, or your cabinets won't you close. You can go down, you can go down to certain parts of town and you can look that there wasn't a level used to build that. Yeah. Uh, certain parts of the world. But when you want to build it where it's accurate, where things mm-hmm. can be referenced, there's got to be a plumb line. There's got to be a reference point. And that's what vision does. Right. I think one of the problems we have in our world today is there is no vision. There yeah. is no plumb line. The goalposts keep getting moved. Um, oh, that's your truth. That's not necessarily <laughs> my truth. Honey, baby, let me tell you this. Yeah. There is no your truth, my no. truth. There is just a, the truth. One truth. That's it. This is the plumb line right here. Right. And it's what that word says. That is, that is your plumb line. That is your reference point. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's important to have a vision because if what you're doing or what I'm doing does not fit yeah. in that vision, does not fit in that, then it doesn't belong. That's why I say a vision is both limiting and liberating. Yes, because, and it helps you stay specific. Oh, Kristen, so true. It helps so you true. stay on target, on topic, and yes. not get sidetracked, like we say, rabbit trails. Oh, <laughs> squirrel. squirrel. Yeah. Which we can do that sometimes. I, and, I have the gift yeah. of squirrel. Oh, yeah. Yes. I uh, do too. <laughs> our daughter, Sydney, does, really. Oh, she is very yeah. talented. She speaks fluent squirrel. <laughs> anyway, we'll explain what that means to you. So, what are they talking about squirrel for? All right. Hey, we're going to go back into day two, uh, day two, part two of Vision Sunday. Vision allows us, Kristen, it's like a plumb line. You ever seen right. a plumb line? I should have had one here Some today. Some people might a plumb know what that Okay, is. you young whippersnappers, you don't know what a plumb line is. A plumb line is a weighted plumb, a weighted like a looks like an arrow, and you have a string attached to it. And Chris, when you know what it is, you're you're, you're a carpenter. When you when you hang that plumb line, it doesn't matter where you are; it's always going to go straight down to gravity. Right. It's going to pull it. Grab the law of gravity works, whether you believe in it or not. Yep. And that building can be like this, that wall can be like this, but that plumb line is always going to be here. Vision gives us a plumb line that says, okay, well, I got this idea. Well, it may have this idea, but does it line up with the vision of the house? Yes. Does this, does this line up with the vision I have for myself? Get a vision for yourself. Yes. The vision for yourself may be I am going to, uh, I'm going to grow my mind. Well, get more specific about the vision. Write it down. Yes. I'm going to read I want to read a book. Right. Don't just say I'm going to don't be vague about it. You, you don't need to say that I'm going to read more this year. No, because you don't have it's not measurable. You can read more by reading I say you read one book last year, okay? Say you can read one book with and then add 10 pages out of another book. Well, you read more, but it wasn't measurable, so therefore you don't know what to attain. Here's a goal. Here's how you can work that part. I want to read a book. We're going to use that as an example. I'm going to read for 20 minutes a day. Exactly. I'm going to read a, a building, a self-increase uh, book, a self-growth, a self-improvement book, 20 minutes a day. I'm going to work on personal growth 20 minutes a day. I want to spend more time with God. Well, define what more time is. Yes. So many minutes a day or yeah. hour, however yes. long, because it's measurable and that measured time is attainable. And I, I brought up here... You ever heard of SMART goals? Anybody heard of SMART goals? S-M-A-R-T? Mm-hmm. SMART yes. goals doesn't mean, oh, that's a smart idea. No, SMART goals is it's an acronym for S means specific. Exactly. Get specific in what you want to accomplish. Measurable is the M. A is achievable. Be realistic. I mean, stretch yourself, but don't say, you know what? I'm going to lose 200 pounds by next Sunday. <laughs> what are you going to do? Get a divorce? <laughs> okay. Relevant. Something that works within your place of reason and also timely. Give yourself a deadline on it. Get a vision for yourself. Get a vision for your family. If it's no more than sun, we are going to get all the leaves off of this property. Right. 
Oh, no, no. Get the reason why we have families that are broken up today is because there is no vision that is the plumb line that causes us to come back together. Right. I'll give you a story. Years ago, I was probably 12, 11, 12 years old. We went to this church in Shreveport, Louisiana. It was an Assemblies of God church. And we walk into the church and we're setting up on a Saturday night. And the pastor's there, real nice. They had a little boy, a little, nice little boy, nice wife. And they, as we're setting up, there's this kid that walks in that looks like he fell out of the back of Metallica's bus. <laughs> His hair is all whacked and long, black leather. I mean, he'd be in style today. I mean, he just walked in. But the thing about the kid is, is he would be sitting somewhere and he'd go. And daddy was like, is there something wrong with this kid? He'd walk through the church. We're setting up. He was playing his air guitar. This is before Wayne's World. Wayne's World, way before that. He must have been the inspiration for Wayne's World. Come to find out he was the pastor's 17-year-old son. And he wanted to be a rock and roll star. And so one night during the revival, dad said, bring your guitar up here. So we tried to, he wanted to hear what he played on the guitar, and all he knew was, dun, 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 dun. Goes, oh, that's something there. Well, then he goes out and he talks to the pastor, and we noticed that by the parsonage, just off from the church, there was this beautiful blue silver eagle bus. The pastor used to be an evangelist. And daddy went out, and he says, oh, man, this is something. He goes, yeah, I'm, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm about to resign from this church, and I'm going to take my wife, and we're going to go back on the road. We're going to evangelize. And he was a great carpenter. My dad goes into the bus, and he goes in and looks, and he shows him. He said, yeah, here's the kitchen. Here's the living room. We're talking about having a vision for your family. Here's the kitchen. Here's the living room. We go, we go on inside, and, and here's, the, here's a little booth we'll eat, and, and then here's a, here's a bed for my, my baby boy, and here's his closet, and then here's the, the bathroom, and then this is the master suite where my wife and I. It was just gorgeous. I mean, the man was a master carpenter. It's for a motorhome. It was beautiful. And my dad said, oh, that's great. He said, where's the, where's the older boy? Where's his bed? Oh, he's not, he said he's not going with me. And I said, what? Yeah, he said he's not going with me. He said he's not going. He's going to stay with his rock and roll band. He's not going with me. My dad said, no, no, wait a second. And he said, this boy is 17 years old. <laughs> yeah. He walks around. Yeah, he don't want to go with me. He said, do you know why he doesn't want to go with you? He said, have you seen the inside of your bus? Yep. You have drawn a picture and you have let him know, I have built you out of my life. You have no place in my future. Exactly. He built, my dad said, you built your bunk, you built your wife a place, you built your little boy, but you let him know you have no place yep. in my future. He said, if I were you, when the sun comes up tomorrow, I'd have me a crowbar ripping this thing out. And he asked, what are you doing? I'm putting you a bunk here because when these wheels hit the highway, your butt's going to be in here. Yep, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was about a few weeks later, we get a letter from this guy. I guess it was a few weeks, a few months later. And the pastor said, well, I resigned the church. He said, we went on the road. Matter of fact, the next morning, actually the next morning, we hear, bam, bam. <laughs> he was out there ripping that beautiful bus out on the inside. He texted, he texted, yeah, he, te he wrote a letter. <laughs> this is back before Al Gore invented the internet. He writes a letter and he says, I want you to know, Pastor, he said, we resign. We're on the road evangelizing. And my boy's going with me. Yep. That's right. You see, when you get a vision for somebody and show them where they fit, mm -hmm. they'll be there. Get a vision for yourself. Get a vision for your family. Get a vision for your church. And in getting your vision, you don't let nobody talk about your vision. That's right. You know, we talk about sharing our vision. And it, it is important to share it, but it's important to share it with the right people. Because you don't want to share it with someone who is going to, uh, I'm trying to say a nice Poo -poo way. Poo-poo it. Yeah. You don't want to share it with Dump someone who's going to put it down and make you feel like it's impossible or ridicule you because you're dumb. That's too big of thinking. Those are the people you don't want to share it with. Because when you share it with the people who have um, minds to think, oh, that's possible because with God, all things are possible. That's great. You're going to achieve that. How can I pray with you with that? Those are the people you share your vision with. Those are the ones you share details with because you know they're going to be in your corner. We, 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 she brought that up this past week as we were recording the broadcast and something went off on the inside of me. I was like, oh man, it's a good nugget. And mm -hmm. the Lord gave me, a, he gave me a tactic. He gave me a tool. 
and I encourage everybody to do this. How many, how many has got, a, you got some big dreams, some big, some big ideas, some big visions? You, you know, we're going to yeah. develop those, put those down, and give, give some life to those. Well, in getting those visions, she said, you share, don't share them with the wrong person. So what we suggest is this. Get you like, you ever been to the cologne department or the perfume counter at, at, well, at, at Dillard's? Yeah. And you get a little sample? You don't know if that Chanel is going to smell good on you or not. <laughs> it may smell good on your sister, but your whole chemistry, you may smell, you ain't going to smell like weed, but you may not smell as good. <laughs> we were driving down University the other day here. I'm going to have a squirrel moment. We're going to watch Judah play in a basketball game. We, this, this car pulled up beside us. Some of them, I don't know, there's a bunch of them, but there was one, I guess, that came, I, I'm judging it came from this one. Whatever car it was, either they had just ran over a skunk, started up a new Starbucks mobile truck, that skunk or would. they had a weed factory in there. My Lord, it was so strong. The skunk would have needed to be in the car. My Lord, I thought Grandma was going to get a contact high right there, going down to university. We turned off, and it just like, man, it's, I don't, it's bad. that stuff stinks, folks. Pew, wee, okay. Anyways, back to our regular scheduled programming already in progress. Get you a little sample vision that if they, if they, if they, if they shoot it down, it ain't going to hurt you. Right. Because if I've got something I've been working on for a while and I come and I'm going to tell you about it, and then you tell me, you know, I've tried that before, and you know what, and you just shoot me down real quick. Well, I yeah. just realized you're not qualified for my next statement. Right, exactly. You got to qualify for what you're going to get from me. Yes. The Bible says, don't cast your pearl before the swine. I prefer you not be a pig when I'm talking. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that pastor was going to be that rude. You need to get your little attitude when it comes to your vision. It's your baby. You are yes. pregnant with something God has given you. So get you a little sample vision. You got to be protective. A bit. Get you a sample vision. And then what that means is, is you're just going to share some and test the waters to see how they react. Mm-hmm. You know, I was thinking about you may not want a, you may not want a Cadillac Escalade, but I mean, make it make it a good one to make it. You'll hit a choking point. You know, I was thinking about getting a Cadillac Escalade. You know, they're like one hundred and thirty six thousand dollars now. And if they immediately come back with, I don't know why you'd want one of those. That's just too much money, especially for a preacher. Notice right there at that moment, get their name and address, send them a thank you note. Thank you for allowing me to save my word from ever wasting my dreams on your stupidity again. Yep. Exactly. Y'all look at Somebody says, well, I just feel like God's calling me out to, to, to go into the prison ministries. You tell us, you know, I tried that prison ministry before. That's just, you know, that, those people never do change. Don't talk to negative people about what God's put in your heart. Right. So get you a little sample size, and if it sprays on, if it smells good, then do it again. <laughs> get them the whole bottle. <laughs> Otherwise, don't. Does that make sense? Yes. Ah, 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 ah. So good. So good. Yeah. I like that last part. Get a sample. Get a sample of your vision. Don't right. share the good stuff with just anybody. Yeah. Don't test, let them shoot it down. Test the waters. Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Some people you've been hanging around uh -huh. ain't nothing but pigs. And they just yep. want to step on your dream, step on your vision. Or tell you how it won't work. Or how I tried that. It didn't work. Yes. You know what? You may have tried it, but you ain't me. Right. It wasn't meant for them. That's right. It could right. have been meant for you. <laughs> That's right. It could have been meant for you. So, so get you a little sample size and splash it on them. If the fragrance is sweet, oh, we'll get some more. But if it's not, move on. Don't yeah. share them the big stuff. Only share your vision with people that will encourage you. Now, I'm not saying don't get some feedback to, for some uh, mentoring or some right. correcting, but there are some people who think it's their call of God in their <laughs> life just to tear down what you say. Yes, exactly. Don't hang around people like that. No. if Because there is a difference. There is a difference between someone who thinks it's their life's journey to tell you how something won't work, but and the difference between a mentor who bounces off different ideas or maybe a different way of looking at it yes that that's helpful and we need that sometimes yes but some people think they just got to tell you why it won't work yeah <laughs> uh, a critical spirit is not a one of the nine gifts of the spirits i'll tell you that no you know krista we talked about being specific when you write your vision yes that's very important um vague goals won't get accomplished no they'll produce vague results yeah but when you're specific with it 
you're able you're able to have something that's measurable. Mm -hmm. You're able to have something. You're having a problem with that hair this week, aren't well, you? Well, there's one sticking right there, <laughs> and it just probably needs to be pulled out. I'm looking at a reference monitor here. I'm just making sure it's not sticking out any there. Well, it, it's important to have measurable go goals. They need to be attainable, not something astronomical that's just not even sensible. You mean like sensible. I shouldn't say I'm going to lose all this weight by the end of the week. Right. No. Measurable, attainable, with a deadline. Because oftentimes, if we don't place a deadline for ourselves, we'll just say, oh, well, I'll start on that tomorrow. Then it'll be, I'll start on that next week. Or let's get started on that at the first of the month. And you know what? Before long, you've gone the whole year and you haven't done anything towards it because I've done that before. Yep. If you will set yourself a deadline or an expiration date of when you want it done, you'll be more apt to stay on target and to fulfill what you have laid out in front of you. Your, your, your calls and thoughts just fire off in my head. Like, for, like for instance, one is have have mark point markers along the way. Yeah. Places. Okay, I, I need to be here by such and such day. Right. I don't have to do it all now, but I need to be here. I need to do this. And yeah. and some people who are house builders or project managers, you get that. Mm -hmm. But we need to pro we need to be our own project manager right. in our own it's life. It's kind of like when I have a fitness goal or I have a like thing I want to reach. I do six week intervals. Like I give myself six weeks, but I have a goal to reach, and I have six weeks to do it. That, that's that. And I like the story you talked about with that son and the father and son. Oh, I remember that. That bus was blue. It was a silver eagle, and that guy he would walk around. He would play his air guitar, but his daddy had no place for him, and so he saw his way out. Yeah. My dad always had a place for me. He said, son, if, 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 if I ain't got you, I can't do it. Right. And I believed him. And people, some people say, oh, well, he could have done it. No, he couldn't have done it like he did. Because right. in order for him to do what he was called to do, it included me. Because God is a God of family. And I'm telling yeah. you, I don't, you, you don't, I'm not saying your family's got to be involved in all your business or whatever, but you need to have a place in your family for your kids. Right. And the thing that I felt, I found kind of interesting is the kid was only 17 and the dad was like, he said he didn't want to go. Well, too bad. He's 17. 17. I don't get these shows. Girls 13 years old. You can't pick my friends. No, but I can lock you in your room until that person gets tired <laughs> of not seeing you anymore. I mean, yeah. be, a week, be right? the parent. Remember that part earlier about the squirrel? You'll get me squirreling there Be the when parent. you get parents trying to, well, she's 13, yeah. make her own decisions. She's a child. Really? Okay. All right. <laughs> we better wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, the clock is ticking. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow with more. Remember, we, we love, love you. you. God, God loves, loves you. And God, God has, has big plans, plans for you. you.